hard. Oh, sure. Six o'clock. Good evening. After a lot of persuasion from a busy person like Mr. Satyan Menon, we have been able to, I can say, tap or he, his pursuit to take the knowledge was a common point which helped us to connect with him. And I thought that execution of decrees and orders of, or in orders, the general principles, as a professional, I would say that it's a task which they say that to have a judgment, it's always easy. But to enjoy the fruits of that uh, decree is always tough. But if you understand the nuances for the applicable, what are the general principles, if you have a broad guidelines to understand that, it will be always easy. Since the session would be around for one hour, you could you'd have a bird eye view. He will be also sharing a PPT with us as well as on the screen where one can note down what are the general principles for this execution of the decree? But Mr. Satyaman, as we all know that he's a former district judge, as well as a former director of Kerala Judicial Academy. That itself is a good testimony to understand the knowledge and the insights which we'll have for the session. And those who have been connected with Beyond Law would know that we try to pitch in the speakers who have knowledge and who can I would say hammer the point in the right way. I would not take much time. I will request Mr. Menon to share his knowledge. And thank you for accepting our invite. Over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Vikas. Uh, I'm happy to be part of one of the programs of Beyond Law CLC. Uh, as Mr. Vikas said, uh, I was I, 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 it's a long pending request from Mr. Vikas. Somehow we, we fixed several dates, but somehow we thought um, postponed because of so many reasons so many I, i'm not a busy person i am i've completed i've retired from service but usually I, I used to have some online classes for the academy and i'm going to the academy still as a faculty and a few i'm kind of attending a few online classes so i don't know why uh, this much delay has happened in getting involved with uh, mr vikas and his team so with this uh, uh, brief I ex express my sincere thanks to Mr. Vikas and his entire team for giving me an opportunity to speak on this very important subject, execution of decrees and orders. Of course, I will be speaking only the general principles because it's a very vast subject. It's not possible to deal with the entire topic in 60 minutes. So I'll be touching some provisions, general principles, uh, common, uh, basic, mostly elementary, elementary basic principles, mostly useful to the new entrants to the bar. Of, of course, there are experienced lawyers, they are just here. Uh, they will also be able to refresh their memory as regards the principles of execution of decrees and orders. So I let me share the presentation. I would like to uh, I'd speak to you through my presentation. Okay. See, uh, it's a common saying that the difficulty of the litigant start when he executes, when he gets a decree and goes to the court to execute it to get the fruits of the decree. Uh, there are several reasons the litigant will resist the, the judgment that will try to delay the execution of the decree. So many, so many reasons are there. So this was this was commented upon by the Supreme Court in one of the decisions. Of course, uh, the legislator legislature has amended the CPC on a couple of occasions, and now the uh, now the delay has been reduced, or uh, the, 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 there has been cons considerable uh, effort to see that the decrees executed as quickly as possible. Recently, the Supreme Court has also di issued directions to the courts to see that the execution petition is disposed of within six months from the date of filing. Otherwise, the courts will have to state reasons. Around 14 directions were issued. So with this brief introduction, let me see what, what is there in the CPC. CPC 1908, it's an effective and self-contained mechanism for execution of decrees and orders. There are elaborate provisions that 
safeguards the interest of all the parties, the decree holder, the judgment that uh, even the third parties, the objectors, claim petitions, and there are provisions to meet different situations. Provide then it provides for effective measures to all the parties concerned. Uh, as you are know, as you are aware, execution is not the term. The expression execution is not at all defined in the court, but the term has been defined and explained by the courts, especially the apex court, through judicial pronouncements. Uh, execution is the enforcement of decrees and orders by the process of the court so as to enable the decree holder to enjoy the fruits of the decree. And it means and includes the process also. This, Like this, this is the way the uh, judicial pronouncements have defined the term execution. Now, when, when, we, when we consider the provisions in the CPC as regards executions, these are the important uh, provisions sections 36 to 74 and order 21 and order 21 contains 106 rules and the entire entire provisions governs govern and regulate the execution of decrees and orders i'll be dealing with only a few provisions sections 36 to 42 and uh, some 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 provisions in order 21 because for obvious reasons it is not possible to discuss the entire thing in one session so when we deal, when we speak about decree and order, let us see what 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 is what is a decree. A decree is defined in section two two of this code of civil procedure, um, and it 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 is deemed to include the rejection of a plaint under order seven rule eleven, and determination of any question under uh, within section one hundred and forty four that is restitution, uh, but it shall not include. Any adjudication from its appeal lies as an appeal from an order, uh, or and an or any order of dismissal for default. So an order dismissing the suit or an application for default is not a decree. So then the explanation says that uh, there, there can be a preliminary decree, there can be a final decree, there can be a decree which is partly preliminary and partly final. And likewise, an order is defined in section. Two subsection 14 of the CPC, uh, formal expression of any decision of a civil court, which is not a decree. So having understood what is what is what is meant by a decree and order, let us see what are the what are various types of decrees. Decree for payment of money, decree for delivery of property, decree for uh, uh, decree for specific, sorry. Uh, more decree for specific performance, restitution of conjugal rights, and then a decree for execution of document, etc. There are any number of several other decrees also. Decree in in a mortgage suit for redemption for closure, decree for fixation of boundary, uh, decree decree in a suit for partition, preliminary decree for partition, final decree for partition. So, in a, especially in in suits. In suits for partition or mortgage, it's a three tier litigation. There is a preliminary decree, there is a final decree, followed by a final decree, and of course, the last stage execution of the decree. Now, when we speak about execution of decrees and orders, we cannot proceed further without referring to section 51. Section 51 is a, is a reservoir of power. It deals with powers of the court to execute the decree. Various methods of execution are mentioned in clauses A to E in, in section 51. They are by delivery of property, that is under order 21 rule 35, by attachment and sale or sale without attachment of property, section 60, 65 to 67 and order 21, uh, rules 41 to 54, 58, and 64 to 106. Then by arrest and detention in civil prison, arrest and detention of the judgment debtor in civil prison. Uh, the, the, the relevant provisions are sections 55 to 59 and order 21, rules 11a, 22, and 37 to 40. Then by appointment of receiver, order 40. These are the uh, common modes of execution. All of you are familiar with. Uh, the, the various types of modes of execution of decrees and orders cover mentioned in section 51 CPC. Then when we 
discuss about the scheme of audit interview. There are several provisions for attach, say, uh, for arrest and detention of the detachment data, uh, garnishy proceedings, attachment and sale of mobiles, attachment and sale of immobile property, procedure for setting aside sale, precautions to be taken before sale. Uh, what what is the procedure to be followed when? Uh, there is a there is resistance or ob obstruction in execution of when delivery of possession of immobile property. There are various various uh, provisions dealing with different situations, different situations, and then also safeguard the interest, the rights and interest of all concerned. Uh, from from the outset, it may look that the procedure is a little bit complicated, but when we when we uh, study the provisions in detail. Uh, we will get will it, 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 we will get an idea that uh, all the uh, all all um, safeguards are there to protect the rights of the degree holder judgment debtor and even third parties. Third parties mean uh, order twenty one rule fifty eight claim petitions, then order twenty one rule ninety seven to hundred and hundred and four. Uh, it's a code in itself, separate code in itself. When there is obstruction by to delivery of possession. Uh, by a third party claiming right title or interest over the property property involved uh, he can uh, he, he, he can make prefer a claim even uh, even by apprehending disposition uh, nine, rule 97 rule 99 then the, uh, the those questions are to be dealt questions in such a claim petition as, will have to be decided as provided in section 101 then the order passed is as good as a decree it is an appealable uh, it is can be it can an appeal can be filed as if it is a decree so various provisions are quick remedy is provided uh, to various parties then what is the period of limitation for execution of a decree two provisions are important uh, article 136 of the limitation act for execution of any decree other than a decree granting a mandatory injunction or order of a civil court to a yes. Then Article 135, mandatory injunction, uh, three years from the date of the decree or where a date is fixed for performance, such date. Perpet of course, perpetual injunction, no period of limitation. Uh, it is uh, whenever the and whenever a decree for perpetual injunction is disobeyed, it willfully disobeyed, it can be enforced through court. Uh, then the next, subject I am dealing with is simultaneous execution against pop. These are general principles before coming to section 36. Some aspects will have to be dealt with. Simultaneous, is it possible for simultaneous execution against property and person of the judgment debtor? CPC says it is possible, but the only rider is that the court has a discretion. Court has a discretion to uh, court has a discretion to refuse simultaneous execution. And to allow the decree holder to avail only one mode of execution at a time. So you will find this, uh, uh, you, will, you will get it from Order 21, Rule 21, and also Order 21, Rule 30 also can be looked into. Now, a question, question may arise sometimes. Uh, suppose uh, the decree holder files his last AP. That means uh, and, uh, there, is, there is no time, time left for filing another AP uh, because the execution will be barred by limitation. He files an application, uh, files an application for execution of a decree for payment of money by arrest and detention in civil prison on the last day of the period of limitation. Then after a week, he came to know that the judgment debtor has some property with him. So very important information as far as the decree holder is concerned. He filed an application to amend the execution petition or to incorporate a prior to proceed against the property. Is it possible? Normally, it is possible. Of course, 2121 says the court can refuse simultaneous execution. But in this case, the, the EP filed by the decree holder was the last EP. So whenever an additional, when, whenever uh, a prior is added, an application to proceed against the property, when another mode of execution is sought to be added, it is treated as a separate application, it's, it's treated as a fresh application. So an, an application for execution of the decree should be filed within the period of limitation. Since the uh, amendment is sought, amendment uh, amendment is sought to incorporate a prior for prior to proceed against the property of the judgment debtor after the period of limitation, that amendment cannot be entertained because it, uh, the right of the decree holder uh, 
to proceed against the property has become barred by limitation. Now let us see what is section 36. Provisions of CPC of this code relating to the execution of decrees shall so far as they are applicable be deemed to apply to the execution of orders including payment under an order. This is section 36. Now, before section 37, we move to we move on to section 38. Which court, uh, which court, which court can execute the decree? Uh, section 38 will give you the answer. The court which passed the decree or the court to which it is sent for execution. This expression has to be remembered by everyone. Which court can execute the decree? Now, normally, the court which passed the decree, the decree can be sent to another court for execution under the circumstances mentioned in section 39, transfer of decree. Now, some general principles before we discuss uh, section 37, 38, and 39. See, the executing court cannot be guided by equ equitable consideration. Equ the, the, uh, there is no question of consideration of equity, equitable principle while executing a decree. The decree has to be executed as it stands. It, the court, the execution court has to strictly follow the terms of the decree. The executing court cannot make additions to the decree while executing it. In, in short, uh, the decree as such has to be executed. It cannot uh, what do you say, add any relief which is specifically refused in the suit under the guise of execution of the decree. An order also can be executed. Um, a decree without jurisdiction, whether in reality, see different types of jurisdiction are there, territorial jurisdiction, pecuniary jurisdiction, and Finally, the most important aspect as far as execution of decree is concerned, inherent lack of jurisdiction. That means lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter. Um, so when, when an objection is raised about the pecuniary jurisdiction or the territorial jurisdiction, it should be raised at the earliest opportunity at the, at the trial court itself. It, you, the defendant is not permitted to raise objection as regards pecuniary jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction. Uh, at the appellate stage, you, may, you, you can refer to Section 21 CPC. But what about inherent lack of jurisdiction? Uh, it goes to the root of the root of the case, uh, root root of the matter. Inherent lack of jurisdiction. The court had no jurisdiction over the subject matter. Still, it proceeded with the case and ended up in granting a decree. Such a decree is void. Such a decree is void, and an objection that. A decree is nullity because the because of inherent lack of jurisdiction of the court which passed it can be raised even at the stage of execution. Then another instance where the decree will be a nullity is if a decree is passed against a dead person. So no decree at all. So these are a few instances where the court can consider, the execution court can consider whether a decree is a nullity or not. In all, under all other circumstances, the court has to execute the decree as it stands. Can the uh, executing, so let us see it one by one. Can the executing court go behind the decree? So we have already discussed it is not possible. Uh, the general principle is that the executing court cannot go behind the decree under execution. It shall execute the decree as it stands. I repeat, the decree has to be executed as it stands. The, some sometimes uh, the judgment editor may, uh, for the sake of for the sake of objection, uh, take a contention that the the judgment, the decree sought to be executed was incorrect in law or on facts. That contention is not available uh, to the judgment editor in the before the execution court. If the judgment editor uh, think so, he, he should have filed preferred an appeal against the decree and judgment of the uh, trial court. He cannot raise an objection that the objection before the execution court that the decree sought to be executed was incorrect in law or on facts. Even if it is incorrect in 
law or, or facts, as I said, the judgment debtor should have um, taken it up before the appellate court, before the appropriate appellate forum. Now, uh, another, uh, another, uh, another, uh, uh, this you may note this decision on execution of uh, erroneous or if, if decrees erroneous in law or on facts cannot go behind the decree. It's a very um, uh, old decision, but still it's worth reading. The principles are narrated 70, 1971 SCC 670, VD Modi versus RA. Rahman. Then, uh, see, certain there, there may be certain circumstances where the court may have to, the execution court may have to find out the true effects of the decree. What are the circumstances? These are the these are a few circumstances uh, for construing a decree. It can add in appropriate cases ought to take into consideration the pleadings as well as the proceedings leading up to the decree. See, the terms of the decree may not be uh, clear. It may be slightly ambiguous. But for that reason, the court execution court cannot refuse to, ex refuse to execute the decree. He ha it has to see what, 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 what exactly was the decree passed. So for that limited purpose, it can take into consideration pleadings as well as the proceedings leading up to the decree. Then, in order to find out the meaning of the words in part, some there may be the, some expressions used, some words used may be may not be clear to the executing execution court or to the parties. So, to ascertain what exactly was the decree passed, court can uh, uh, court can uh, consider the true effect of the decree. Uh, this uh, you may know, note. Uh, AR 1972 Supreme Court 1371. AR 1972 Supreme Court 1371. Vahan Vaja versus Solangi Hanuji. V H A V A N V H A V A N V A J A versus Solangi Hanuji. AR 1972 Supreme Court 1371. So this for the limited limited purpose. The court can construe what exactly is the effect. Consider what exactly is the effect of the uh, decree. Then, uh, I, I, uh, I have already uh, mentioned about this. Still, uh, the question is: Can can a challenge be made on validity of the decree before the executing court? Is it possible? Of course, validity of the decree can be challenged on before the executing court only on the ground that it is a nullity because of inherent lack of jurisdiction the decree is passed against the uh, dead person or or some other grounds which could have the effect of rendering the court entirely lacking in jurisdiction in respect of the subject matter of the suit um, or over the parties to it this was discussed in hiralal versus Kali Nath, AR 1962, Supreme Court 199. It, it was a case of inherent lack of jurisdiction. 1962, Supreme Court 199. So, if it is a nullity, an, an objection that the decree is nullity because the court passed it had uh, lacked uh, uh, in there was inherent lack of jurisdiction as far as the court which passed the decree is concerned then if the decree is passed against a dead person then no such other reason uh, as mentioned in this judgment then the, the next the next point can the executing court add or alter the decree in the light of the event subsequent to the passing of the decree. It is not possible. It cannot go behind the decree. Likewise, it cannot add or alter the decree in the light of the event subsequent to the passing of the decree. Exceptions, of course, I have already mentioned when there is a when the decree is a nullity or bad for bound of for inherent lack of jurisdiction or 
when the decree is passed against a dead person. Uh, these decisions uh, discuss these points. 56 Supreme Court, uh, sorry. Uh, 56 SCJ 301, then 62 Supreme Court 199, uh, already given, uh, then 71 Supreme Court 1371. Then uh, one recent decision also, Breakwell Automotive Comp Components India Limited versus PR Shelvam, 2017 Supreme Court 1577. The entire principles were considered. Entire position was reiterated by the Supreme Court. Um, it is only in the in limited cases where the decrees by court lacking inherent jurisdiction or is a nullity that the same is rendered non-est and is thus inexecutable. An erroneous decree, even as, as I uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, a decree uh, the judgment letter may take a contention that the decree is erroneous in law or facts. That contention is not available because an erroneous decree is different from a decree which is a nullity. So, in short, the contentions available to the decree holders, to the judgment letter, are very limited. The validity of the uh, decree can be challenged in execution of the decree only when, only on the ground that it is a nullity. The judgment editor cannot take a contention that it's an erroneous decree. Or there are the judgment editor cannot request the execution court to take into account um, subsequent events after the passing of the decree. It cannot, the judgment editor, uh, the decree, uh, the execution court cannot add or alter reliefs after passing of the decree. So, Then uh, can the court interpret the decree? We have this or this point also we have discussed a little while ago, but still there is another one more decision. Uh, an executing court, court can interpret a decree, but it cannot make a new decree. Under the guise of interpreting a decree, it cannot grant a new decree, a different decree. It can interpret a decree for a limited purpose of uh, to understand the terms of the decree or to, to ascertain what exactly was the decree passed. So for that purpose, the pleadings and the proceedings leading up to the passing of the decree can be looked into. 1951 Supreme Court 189. Then the next point is merger of decree. See, um, a, a decree is passed, then the matter will be taken up in appeal. So in appeal, the appellate court may allow the appeal or dismiss the appeal. It, can, it, it may confirm the appeal. It may set aside the uh, confirm the decree, set aside the uh, decree, or even modify the decree. So, what is the effect? Uh, it's a common common principle that the there is a merger in such cases when the decree is confirmed, um, confirmed, modified, or reversed. The decree of the decree of the trial court merges into the decree of the appellate court. Uh, this is the principle. Uh, if, if you want a decision, you may note the ITC versus Amartal, AR 1958 Supreme Court 868. Then what happens? What happens when an appeal is dismissed for default? What happens when appeal is dismissed for default? Merger, there is the, if the, the is, is there any merger? So this question was considered um, in Shiord and Singh versus Dario Kunwar, AR 1966 Supreme Court 13, 32. Dismissal of an appeal for default or any technical, or on any technical ground amounts to confirmation of the decree appeal against. Hence, it gets merged in the appellate decree or order. So this is the principle. So based on this, there is merger when an appeal is dismissed for default or on any other technical grounds. So another situation can may arise. Another situation, abatement of appeal because of 
the death of the judgment debtor. What happens? Uh, because of the death of the appellant, or there is no abatement, there, there is no merger if the appeal abates, because uh, this position, this situation was considered in these, these, these decisions by the Supreme Court. Ambabai versus Kubat, AR 2001, Supreme Court 2003. Uh, abatement takes place. Uh, that uh, There is no merger in, if the appeal abates. That was the decision in Ambabai. Uh, abatement takes place on its own force by passage of time. No specific order is envisaged. Mother Naik was in Mother Knight's case, 683 Supreme Court 676. Then same principle was considered in AR 2003 Supreme Court 42, double four. So when the, there is no merger, if the appeal abates, there is merger if the appeal is dismissed for default or on technical grounds. There is merger when the appeal, when the uh, decree and judgment of the trial court is confirmed, uh, confirmed, modified, or reversed in appeal. So, <laughs> the next point I would like to discuss with you is, is uh, in a particular case, certain reliefs were denied by the tri trial court. Can the execution court grant such relief? So, the answer is a big no. Uh, execution court cannot give any relief to the decree holder when a relief was expressly denied to him in the suit. Again, 1960 Supreme Court, 388. And sometimes the judgment letters may take a contention that summons was not decrease in nullity because summons was not properly served on them. That contention is also not available available to the judgment debtor because the remedy available to the judgment debtor in such a situation is to go to the trial, trial go to the trial site, file an application under Order Nine Rule Thirteen to set aside the uh, ex parte uh, decree. Section 37. So the, uh, after th th these are a few um, basic principles we have mentioned because the decree as it stands has to be executed. The uh, validity of the decree can be challenged in the execution court only on the ground that it is a nullity for reasons already I have specified. It cannot add or alter the terms of the decree. It cannot grant it relief with, which is expressly refused by the trial court. Of course, the Ex execution court can interpret interpret the terms of decree for the purpose of executing it to give to give the decree holder fruits of the decree for that purpose it can refer to the pleadings and the proceedings leading up to the passing of the decree under no other circumstances it can go behind the decree or it can um, take a contention it can accept a contention that the decree is erroneous in law or on facts and of course, Section 47 CPs is very is the important important, and it says what are the questions that can be decided, that can be considered by the execution court. All questions relating to execution, discharge, or satisfaction of the decree between decree holder, judgment debtor, their representatives, and also uh, in, by the amendment, the auction purchaser also has been added. Uh, a separate suit will not lie. There is express bar for filing a separate suit to, in respect of these questions, execution, discharge, or satisfaction. Whenever we deal with uh, execution of decrees and orders, the section 47 should always be in our mind. What are the questions that can be considered, that can be determined by the execution goal? Execution questions relating to execution, discharge, or satisfaction of the decree. Now, let us see what is meant by the expression, court which passed a decree. Section 37 deals with the definition of the court which passed a decree. Usually, the court which passed a decree is the, uh, the trial court. The, usually, the de decree, decree is passed by the trial court. That is the court which passed the decree. Suppose the decree is passed in appeal, in exercise of the appellate jurisdiction. The court which passed the decree is the court of first instance. Suppose the court of first instance has ceased to exist or to have jurisdiction to execute it, then the court, which if the suit wherein the decree was passed was instituted at the time of making the application for the execution of the decree, would have jurisdiction to try such suit. 
the explanation is also important. Uh, so, but there, there may be redefining of territorial jurisdiction. Because of redefining of territorial jurisdiction, the court, court of first instance will not lose its jurisdiction to execute the decree. What is meant by clause A, where the decree to be executed has been passed in the exercise of appellate jurisdiction, the court of first instance. A decree of appellate court has to be executed by the court of first instance. Um, for that also, there is a decision, Raman Gutti versus Avara, 1994, 2 SCC, 6, 42. There are other decisions also. This is one of the decisions. Now let us see, what, when can a decree be transferred? Remember, a decree can be executed by the court which passed it or the court to which it is sent for execution. So, different situations are uh, mentioned in section 939. So, that usually the uh, judgment debtor will be within the jurisdiction of the court or he may have property within the jurisdiction of the court which ex executes the decree. Suppose the judgment debtor is not available within the jurisdiction of the court or uh, he does not have any property within the jurisdiction of the court. What is the procedure to be followed? So decree has to be transferred to another court for execution. So the application has to be filed before the court which passed the decree. That application should be filed by the decree holder with a, in the form of an execution petition to the court which passed it to transfer, to send the decree to another court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, what are the circumstances under which the decree can be sent for execution? That is mentioned in clauses A to D of uh, section 39, subsection 1. If the person against whom the decree is passed actually and voluntarily resides or carries on business or personally works for gain within the local limits of the jurisdiction of such other court, because the, the, that means the JD is not available within the jurisdiction of the court which passed the decree, but available within the jurisdiction of another court. Then, if such person has no property within the local limits of the jurisdiction of the court which passed the decree, sufficient, that is that's sufficient to satisfy such decree and has property within the local limits of the jurisdiction of such other court, the judgment debtor has no property within the uh, uh, local limits of jurisdiction of the court which passed the decree but has some property within the jurisdiction of another court in that on that uh, in that situation also the decree holder can uh, apply to the court to get the decree transferred to that court then if the decree directs sale or delivery of immobile property situate outside the local limits of the jurisdiction of the court which passed it or if the court which passed the decree considers for any other reason which it shall record in writing that the decree should be executed by such other court. This is sub section 39.1. Then sub sub subsection 2 says, the court which passed the decree may its own motion send it for execution to any subordinate court of competent jurisdiction. The sub subordination of courts is mentioned in section 3, CPC. Uh, the district court uh, uh, the district court, the sub, sub the sub court, and the municipal court are subordinate to the uh, high court. Then, the municipal court and the sub subordinate court are the the, the, the court of the subject are uh, subordinate to the district court. Uh, this is this is the way section thirty nine says about about subordination subordination of courts. Then subsection three. Uh, what is meant by competent court of competent jurisdiction for the purpose of section 39 it is explained in subsection 3 for the purposes of this section a court shall be deemed to be a court of competent jurisdiction if very the next next sentence is very important at the time of making the application for the transfer of decree to it so the point to be the crucial point is that at the the, the point of time of making the application for transfer such court would have jurisdiction to try the suit in which such decree was passed. So a court shall be deemed to be a court of competent jurisdiction if at the time of making the application for the transfer of decree to it, 
such court would have jurisdiction to try the suit in which such decree was passed. Then section 39.4. That is also very, very important. Nothing in this section shall be deemed to authorize the court which passed a decree to execute such decree against any person or property outside the local limits of its jurisdiction. So section 39.4 was introduced by the CPC Amendment Act 9, 1999 uh, with effect from um, July 2002. Um, it, the major amendments were made to the CPC uh, for expedient expeditious trial uh, or to reduce the delays faced at different levels of the litigation. Amendments uh, came came into force with effect from 1 7 2002. The amendments amendments were uh, challenged before the Supreme Court. They, those challenges were considered in two decisions, two cases, two decisions, reported decisions. Every pro, every amendments were considered and approved by the Honorable Supreme Court. Uh, every everything was considered to Salem Bar Association case number one, the year 2003 Supreme Court. 189, then Salem 2, 2005, Supreme Court 3353. Three. You will get a clear idea about various amendments, the, the objections raised, and the and the uh, and the, con the considerations made by the uh, Supreme Court. So, along with Section 39, for while uh, transfer of transfer of decree. Uh, provisions or order, 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 rules 5 to 8 in order 21 are also to be considered. That deals with the procedure for transfer of decree. Section 39 deals with the circumstances under which a decree can be sent for execution to another court of competent jurisdiction. When uh, 39, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is a general provision uh, that uh, the court which passed the decree cannot. It does not have jurisdiction to execute the decree if the person, if the judgment debtor is not before it, or if the judgment debtor does not have property before it. Then Rule 5 deals with the mode of transfer. Rule 6 deals with procedure where court decides that its own decree shall be executed by another court. Then Rule 7 deals with court receiving copies of decree. What 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 should what should be done by the uh, court, which to which it is sent for execution. And that court has to file it without proof, without insisting for proof. Then rule it, execution of decree by the court to which it is sent for execution. So these are these are the provisions. The, these orders, order 21 rules 5 to 8 will have to be read along with section 39 to get a clear idea about the transfer of decree and the procedure to be followed while sending a uh, decree to another court for court of competent jurisdiction for execution. Then uh, section 41 says that result of execution proceedings shall be certified. So the court to which a decree is sent for execution shall certify to the court which passed it the fact of such execution or where the where the Court to which it is sent for execution fails to execute the same, the circumstances attending such failure. So this has to be uh, returned to the reply. This information has to be sent to the court which passed the decree. The transfer report will have to say that this much of decree, this much of decree has been uh, uh, executed. Part either part satisfaction or no satisfaction of the decree has to be uh, communicated or conveyed to the court which passed the decree then what are the powers of the court in executing transfer decrees it is need it is needless to say that the court executing the decree shall have the same powers as that of the court which passed the decree of course certain certain restrictions are there in section 42 of course general generally the court executing the decree that means the court that includes the court to which it is sent for execution shall have the same powers as that of the court which passed the decree. And that power includes transfer of decree to another court for execution under section 39. So if that power is exercised, that is if the, uh, if the decree is sent to another court for 
execution, the transfer court shall inform the fact to the transfer court. This is competency of the court, uh, section 39.3, we have already discussed. Can a decree be assigned like a property? The answer is yes, it can be assigned. The interest in the decree under the decree can be assigned like a property. The transferee can execute the decree. Um, Order 21 Rule 16 uh, is the relevant provision. The execution should be by the modes provided in the court. Uh, of course, the transferee has to obtain permission of the court which passed the decree and it shall also, the court shall also issue notice to the uh, transferor and also to the judgment debtor before proceeding with execution of the decree at the instance of the transferee. Then a decree sent for execution to another court. The question may arise, does the transferee court has power to review the order passed by the transferor court? So it, it does not have such power. The transfer, transferee court is not vested with any jurisdiction under section 42 to review the order of the transferor court or reconsider it on any grounds. See, order 21 rules um, 5 to 8 says that the while sending a decree for, while transferring a decree for execution, the transferor court has to send a copy of the decree. Then two certificates are also necessary. Once one is this one, one certificate should say that, should state that to the extent of, the, to what extent the decree has been satisfied. Suppose the decree is executed in part to the extent to which satisfaction has been obtained and what part of the decree remains unsatisfied. Then a copy of copy of the orders, if any, passed in the execution petition. Uh, so, so uh, the ex, the transferee court does not have the jurisdiction to reconsider the orders passed uh, on any grounds, or it cannot also review the orders of the transferor court. It has to start. The, it has to execute the decree from the point. Uh, from, from the point it receives the decree for execution from the transferor court, that means the court which passed the decree. Then some other provisions uh, in Order 21 uh, rules, uh, rule, Order 21 rules 1 and 2, methods of payment in pursuance of a decree uh, by deposit into court whose duty is to execute. So what Order 21 rules 1, 2 and to A also can be looked into by deposit into court whose duty it is to execute the decree or send to that court by postal money order or through a bank or it, of course payment can be made out of court also um, to the decree order by decree holder by postal money order or through a bank or by any other mode wherein payment is evidenced in writing or otherwise or some other modes as directed in the decree. Then what, what are the types of execution petitions? Order 21 rule 10 deals with the execution petition and order 21 rule 11 says that an, 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 an application can be, an application for execution can be written or in writing or can be even or, an oral application is permitted. Order 21 Rule 11 1, sub rule 11 1 says that oral application can be the decree holder can make an oral application under what circumstances? If it is a if the decree is for payment of money, and at the time of passing of the decree, the decree holder makes an application, and when the judgment provided that the judgment letter is available within the precincts of the court, so it, usually or oral application for execution of the decrees not made. I don't know any such procedure is prevailing in any part of the country. Usually written application is filed for execution of the decree in accordance with the provisions of the CPC. Uh, then or, rule sub rule uh, or rule 11 to written application provides for written application and it shall contain details mentioned there in, mentioned there. 
a certified copy of the decree also should be filed along with the uh, execution petition. Then this is another important provision. This is the central provision, Order 21, Rule 22. Um, the court has discretion. So, sorry, or, or, order, under Order 21, Rule Under order 21, this is some mistake in the, um, the first part you need not look into. Uh, under order 21, rule 22, the court has to issue notice to the judgment debtor um, under certain circumstances why the decree should not be executed. Uh, if the ex execution petition is filed beyond two years from the date of the decree, or execution is sought against legal representatives of the JDs or against assignees or receiver in insolvency proceedings. Rule, under these circumstances, notice under Rule 22 is mandatory. Of course, the, the later part of the section says that the court, in un, under certain circumstances, um, need not issue a notice. Of course, under exceptional circumstances, only. generally, if the execution petition, un, if under these circumstances, a notice should go to the judgment debtor before proceeding before it proceeds with execution of the decree. Then stay of execution. Usually, uh, stay is granted by the appellate court under order, but order forty one rule five says that. For a limited period, for a fixed period only, the trial court can grant an order of stay. Then there are two other provisions also uh, under Order 21, Rule 26. This is this is a power that is available to the transferee court. Uh, it can stay execution of the decree to a limited period to facilitate the judgment debtor to obtain necessary stay orders from the trial court, which passes the decree. Then 21, 29 also, order 21, rule 29 also, uh, the it stay, in a, it stay of execution can be granted under peculiar circ particular circumstances. Then another suit is in, another suit instituted by the JD or other person interested in the same subject matter against the decree holder is pending. So these are the uh, these are the these are a few provisions that uh, by which it it, it the execution of the decree can be stayed by the court which passed the decree or the court to which it is sent for execution. Then some, some other important point, point aspects also can be um, borne in mind. Uh, the first one is regarding the limitation, period of limitation for uh, delivery of possession by auction purchaser, court pur auction purchaser under Order 21 Rule 95 CPC. That is one year from the date of confirmation of sale. Then uh, we have already dealt with Article 135, uh, um, period of limitation for enforcement of a decree for mandatory injunction. That is three years from the date of decree or when a date is fixed for performance from that date. Then uh, to record an adjustment or satisfaction of decree under Order 21 Rule 2 CPC, that is 30 days from the date of payment or adjustment, Article 125. Uh, to record an adjustment or satisfaction of a decree under Order 21 Rule 2, 30 days are from the date of payment or adjustment. Then for payment of the amount due under decree by installments under Order 21 Rule 11 2, 30 days from the date of decree. Then uh, when sale takes place, usually application applications are filed to set aside sale. What is the period of <clears throat> limitation to file apl applications under Order 21, Rule 89, 90, or 91? That is 60 days from the date of sale. Then um, re-delivery of possession under Order 21, Rule 99, CPC. When uh, when a third party is dispossessed in execution of a decree by the decree holder or by the auction purchaser, 
he can approach the execute execution court with a claim petition. Uh, the decision, the, the Supreme Court has held that even by appreh even apprehending disposition, that uh, such person can approach. But when there is read when when the when the prior is for re delivery of position under Order Twenty One Rule Ninety Nine, it is thirty days from the date of disposition, Article One Twenty Eight. Then perpetual injunction, no limit, no period of no time is specified. Then, then in uh, in execution of uh, a decree for payment of money money by arrest and detention, usually um, a JD can be kept in custody in in custody. So after uh, after the court passes an order for detention in civil prison, so as to enable the judgment debtor to pay them all instead of. Uh, spending some time in service. That is the, the maximum period that is uh, the, the maximum period during which such custody is possible is 15 days. Then, what is the time limit for deposit of three fourths of the sale proceeds? See, when when there's when sale when sale takes place, the purchaser has to remit 25 percent of the sale price immediately on the date of sale itself. And the balance amount within 15 days. That 15 days is fixed by the statute, so it cannot be no no further extension is possible. So, what is the period of period 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 time? What is the time specified for uh, deposit of three fourth of the sale price? That is 15 days. That period cannot be extended because <clears throat> it's a ma mandatory provision. The, the court has no power to extend the period of 15 days. Then. Mm. Okay, these are a few um, few provisions, few, few provisions, or a few tips as regards uh, execution of uh, decree. Um, some some about some provisions it can be borne in mind. Then another thing is, uh, what is the period of suppose suppose um, any application filed under Order Twenty One is dismissed for default or uh, an order is made ex parte. What is the remedy available to the applicant or to the uh, respondent? Uh, hundred and the relevant, relevant provisions are rules uh, 105 and 106 of order 21. 105 and 106 of order 21. 106 says that 30 days. It, it says that 30 days from the uh, dismissal of the application or the order by which the respondent was set ex parte. So that, that that period also cannot be uh, delay in delay. If delay, there is delay in filing the application, that delay can, cannot be condoned because uh, the Section 5 of the Limitation Act has no application to execution proceedings. Apart from uh, these general provisions, uh, there are provisions like Section uh, uh, Garnishy proceedings. Uh, Garnishy, of course, everyone knows Garnishy is a debtor of a debtor, um, the, uh, the, pro the, the property, the, uh, the de decree holder can proceed against the garnishee uh, for uh, to get to execute the decree. Then, Order 21, Rule 58, claim or objection against attachment. Then, uh, then Section 60, Section 60 deals with. Uh, the what are the what are all the properties that can be executed uh, that can be attached and the subsection also says that what are the properties that are exempted from attachment uh, various provisions are there then section 73 provides for distribution of assets rateable distribution when uh, there is one jd one judgment debtor and several judgment debtor and all of them have obtained decree for payment of money against the same judgment debtor and have filed even filed applications for execution of the um, decree so certain conditions are to be satisfied then uh, section 82 when uh, the decree is passed against the government state government or the central government or a public officer uh, it, it shall remain it shall remain unsatisfied for a period of three three months then only execution can be the proceedings in execution can be Taken. Then the, the, there are there is provision 144 for restitution. Uh, suppose uh, 
any decree or order order is set is set aside reversed or modified then whatever whatever uh, benefits obtained by the decree order will have to be restored to the judgment debtor on an application filed by the uh, judgment debtor then order 21 um, uh, order 21 uh, rules 97 to 104 provisions for removal of obstruction resistance then uh, claim by third, third third parties claiming a right title or interest over the uh, property in question this, this, these are these are all general uh, provisions anyway uh, the, the topic execution of decrees and orders is a very vast one and uh, uh, within the time available i can only discuss only this much so, so i am completing my uh, lecture or what what your discussion with you on this topic uh, so if uh, anything anything more is required of course we can we can have a discussion we can take the question yes if questions if any uh, that can be i have to i had to rush through because of the because of the uh, positive because of positive of time uh, anyway i am told that this will be available in the youtube of no no we are already live on the youtube yes so if, if whenever there is any doubt you can uh, go to the youtube channel and see what what exactly is the position mr satyan could you remove this ppt then we can take the questions yes sir, of course of course Yes. So it was a fascinating session. We never realized that one hour has gone through. This is when the decree was passed by the trial court, there was a law fixed by the Supreme Court. Pardon? When the decree reached for it. He says that if there is a change in the law after when the judgment was passed and after the decree is reached for execution, then uh, how does the executing court? Court execute the decree according to which law? Change in law. Change in law. What 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 is meant by change in law? Just a minute. Change in law will not make make the uh, decree unexecutable. Yeah. Uh, suppose suppose change in law means suppose it's suppose it suppose take take the case of a run control legislation, uh, run control run control act uh, because when a particular building is situated within the run control area and the court passed an order of eviction. It went up to the Supreme Court. In the meantime, uh, or uh, vice versa, I, I will I will explain it a little, little, little more clearly. Uh, suppose a suit for eviction is passed, uh, is filed, a decree is passed. The property, the building was situated not in a rent control area. I, uh, I was a little bit confused. The, uh, a decree for eviction was passed in respect of a building situated not situated in the rent control area. It went up to the Supreme Court. The decree and judgment were confirmed. Now, the decree holder wanted to execute the decree. He filed an, filed an execution petition. The government notified that uh, the area where the building is situated uh, as the area that comes under the rent control act. That, that means the decree cannot be executed under that situation because he be, the tenant becomes the a protected protected tenant. The the area where the building is situated comes under the purview of the Rent Control Act. So the decree, even if it is confirmed by uh, by the Supreme Court after several years of litigation, the decree the decree can be the execution court can uh, say that it is not executable. Otherwise. Uh, a change in law, I think that some clarification is required. What exactly is meant by the person who put the question? What type of change in law? If it is a general general thing, I don't think a decree becomes not executable. Okay. This is... Any other question? Yeah, yeah. We have many. Sir, in a suit for recovery of possession, if by mistake the area of schedule of property 
is not mentioned and only plot number is mentioned suit gets decree can such decree be executed when area is not mentioned area is not mentioned area is not mentioned but suppose there is there there, there is there are materials to identify the property usually uh, a decree can be passed in respect of a specific property there will be a schedule to the plane the the the, the schedule to the plane or uh, showing the property or property in respect of which the relief is claimed so uh, whenever there is a decree there is a decree is passed in respect of a specific property that property that decree has to be executed suppose uh, what it, it depends it, again it depends suppose nothing is there nothing is there in the schedule to identify the property no description is not there boundaries are not not clear then it, it might be be, it might be a little difficult, but the executing court can find out, find out with the with the uh, information available what exactly is the property that is sought to be delivered over to the um, uh, decree holder. It does not uh, take away power of the execution court to look into that contention. Court can court can uh, in appropriate case. Uh, I, I identify what exactly is the property. Just because the area is not mentioned, it doesn't mean that the property cannot be delivered over uh, to the uh, decree holder, when, especially when there is a decree passed. In a, this is by Advocate Ashok. In rent petition, two reliefs were given. First one was payment of areas. Pardon? Of First one was for payment of areas of rent. And uh, decree, for decree, decree for areas of rent. And second one for was one uh, was for eviction. What is the limitation period for execution of both the reliefs? Article 136. In a suit for recovery of possession, this is by the advocate Devesh. Recovery of possession, for... it is 12 years LA. Is, is it not 12 years? Article 136. Article 136 is not applicable to decree for mandatory injunction. It is applicable to all other decrees. Yeah. For execution of decree, execution of decree. 12 years, Article 136 is applicable. Uh, D. D. Devesh, uh, sir, in a suit for recovery of pos uh, possession, no, that has been done. Civil court can decree, uh, can civil court decree be executed by criminal courts? No, this is not pardon, pardon. In a suit for court, civil court decree be executed? No, not at all. Not at all. This is no. Alok Mishra, can arbitral awards be executed against the government and attachment and sale can be done? Subject to the as per the provisions of the arbitration and conciliation act, if it is possible, it can be. Then it can, uh, be, is, can be enforced. Is, Our, arbitral, arbitral award can be enforced under, as per the provisions of the arbitration and conciliation act. Of course, one, one decision says Section 38, 39 are not applicable. Um, it can be, a award can be enforced as if it is a decree for the limited purpose. It can, a award can be considered as a decree for the limited purpose of enforcement, to enforce it. So section one decision says Section 38, 30, 39 are not applicable. But it's, it's a decision by the Supreme Court. Yes. Can an order passed under Section 37 of CPC in execution of the award of the Labor Court by a junior civil division be challenged in which court, whether ADJ or a High Court? Uh, an order, an order in execution of the decree passed by the Labor Court award by the civil civil court civil judge junior division. Of course, uh, by the uh, that the, the appellate forum is the district court. Execution would lie. I, uh, Article 227, once there is an adverse order. Article 227 is a different remedy. That's what he's asking, whether 227 can be done or not. Uh, an order passed under Section 37. Yeah. 37 
is it 37 or 37 some other 37, 37. definition of the court which passed a decree what 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 is order to be to be passed under uh, 37 uh, yes, no order. No order need be passed. Can be passed under Section Thirty Seven. Defines which which is the court. Uh, the court which passed a decree. It, ex it defines the expression which the court which passed the decree. There is no scope for any order being passed under Section Thirty Seven. You must be referring to uh, sec Section Forty Seven. No, in the labor court. If, if the municipal, if the civil civil judge junior division passes an order in execution. Of course, uh, the appeal will lie to the court to which uh, an appeal from the decree lies. That is a that is a rule. Of course, two twenty seven. If something comes, if 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 any any grounds are there to approach the High Court under two twenty seven, of course that remedy is available. But against uh, in respect of the final order, an appeal will lie to the district court. Yes. I'm just checking it out, but I don't think we have any question. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Mr. Satin Menon. It was a quite fascinating session. And as you said, that in a bird eye view. It's only a bird eye, or... bird's eye view. Uh, it's very difficult, very, very difficult to speak this vast subject in uh, 60 minutes. Anyway, I can only, I could only give some idea, some idea I know. But, uh, as a lawyer, anyway, if you get an idea, you can always look further ahead. Yes, you can build upon it. Yeah. Those who are not subscribed to the channel of Beyond Law CLC, they can do that. And they can also connect on the WhatsApp number 9872503300. What we have sh shared on the chat for further updates on these webinars. Tomorrow we have Mr. Shankarnath, a uh, YouTuber and content writer. He will be speaking at 1 p.m. on how to do investments. Do stay connected with us. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Thank you. And thank you, Satya. Thank you so much. Thank you.